Welcome to this lecture, which is part of the thermal conduction. Oh, sorry, we have to start from. <laughs> yeah. so. Welcome to this lecture, which is part of the lectures on multidimensional heat conduction, those where we begin to talk more about practice and we're talking about thermal bridges. We're going to introduce in this lecture the notion of a linear thermal transmittance and I'll illustrate a little bit of the problem and how we can calculate such a linear thermal transmittance for some constructions or structures. So what's the problem with the thermal bridges? Well, first of all, there are areas in, in structures where we have more heat transmission than you normally think just out of the flat plane wall. So there are extra heat losses that we must consider. And that is some, or usually it's associated with some multidimensional flow of the heat through the structural elements in our, in our buildings. Uh, and um, if it's only, not only a problem to the heat flow, it's also a problem to leading to cold or indoor surface temperatures, which for our indoor environments may sometimes not be so nice. So, also where do they occur, these thermal bridges? Well, roughly we could say that they occur at assembly points or joints that we have in our buildings. So here are just some indications with the various numbers, the various circles, at intersections and joints, for instance, between windows and walls, but also just where two walls meet each other. It's impossible not to have some degree of uh, thermal bridge in those locations. There are four types of thermal bridge as we normally look upon it, and the first type is the geometrical thermal bridge. So here it's the same material that, that passes around the corner of a building, <coughs> but just the fact that the heat flow can go one dimension through some part of the wall, but as it comes close to the corner, the heat will also have a possibility to take the, the path through the corner itself, and that leads to an extra heat loss, although there are no blocking of the good insulation that we normally have in the wall here. But it leads to something extra that we must consider. And there could be other geometrical con configurations of wall structures that also will somehow lead to extra or, or easy pathways for the heat to flow. So that's because of the geometry. Next type of thermal bridge is a structural thermal bridge. So for structural reasons, you may have to have some some uh, passages through the insulation of structural elements. This could be, for instance, for a balcony that is, is to be held somehow in a structure. Or this could be a pipe or some other structural metal element that has to be led uh, through the installation. So that's a structural thermal bridge. Smaller variations of such bridges could be some that come systematically, perhaps in smaller areas, but they come again and again. So that could be a metal tie that ties together the inner and the outer leaf of a, of a brick wall and thereby passes through the insulation. Or it could also be the wooden joists that you would have in, in, in some lightweight walls as such. So that could just be some examples that we'll see of, of something that comes systematically in a wall. The last type of thermal bridge that we also sometimes see is a convective thermal bridge. So if there's some possibility for air to somehow pass around the insulation bats in a wall, well, then the air would be heated up, it would bring the heat to the front where it's cooled down, and then let back cold, cold here. So that leads to an extra thermal transmission, which kind of looks like a thermal bridge. It's concentrated in local points, and thereby also has a little bit of notion of a thermal bridge. It could also be air that passes through some other elements of the structure, and thereby also influences the thermal pattern in that area where this happens. So, uh, how to calculate this? Uh, well, here is a corner, so that's also leading a little bit to that point of the geometrical thermal bridge. But generally we see upon, for calculations, thermal bridges in a way like this, that we have the surfaces, we have the joints, the linear joints, and then we have points where also there are thermal bridges. And calculation-wise, we also split it in such a way. So here we have surfaces, there are three of them in this case, where we know the heat flows, when we know the, the areas, and we know the U values of those three surfaces. Then we have the linear thermal uh, transmissions that happen here in, in those thermal bridges here, where all the joints are, the linear joints are. So we need to know the length of those connections, and we know, need to know the linear thermal transmittance of each of those three places. Finally, in this case, we also have a point element where we have three-dimensional flow uh, also happening, and that has also to be noted. 
So altogether, we set up one formula to calculate the total heat flow through all the surfaces and thermal bridges. So the surfaces with their U values, as I said before, and here's C, the value that we use to express the linear of thermal transmittance, and that's what we're going to cal calculate soon here. And then kappa will be the point thermal transmittances also. Everything, of course, to make the heat flow uh, in the unit of what we need to multiply with the thermal, with the temperature difference between inside and outside of, of that construction element that we're looking upon. So those are the numbers that we need to make this calculation. <coughs> um, other examples also of, of a structural uh, thermal bridge could be if you have some, some uh, places where you have more or less uh, an outer and an inner wall being uh, constructed together with or without some breaking of the normal thickness of the thermal insulation. And according to the rules, every time you have a change in the thickness of insulation in those points, these two places, well, there you need to find a thermal, linear thermal transmittance for those places, the C value. And that is what we'll do here for an example. So over here on, on the whiteboard here, I've drawn such a traditional old hollow brick wall, an outer leaf of brick, an inner leaf of brick, and then a place where the brick is, is, is constructed such that we, we connect the outer and the inner wall. That's a place where we cannot continue the normal insulation we have, and therefore, we should look upon the construction as a well-insulated part, a not insulated, and a well-insulated part. Three areas. We characterize them each by their length or their width, if you will, L1, L2, and L3. <coughs> so also, by, if everything is multiplied by one meter's projection out of the screen, then you can say it's area one, area two, and area three that we have indicated here. <coughs> Now, uh, in each of those three areas, we can calculate the u-value of, of those wall segments, if you will. But what we should now add more to that is that, according to the slide as I showed before, from the PowerPoint, well, then we have in those locations here, where we have a change of the insulation thickness, and certainly we have from a large thickness to no thickness, in those places, we have a linear thermal transmittance. So we have two of those in this case here. And they are the same because it's all symmetrical. So what I want to do is I want to calculate those C values in, in this case here for that. So what happens is that we have far away from this thermal bridge. Well, then we have uh, a heat flow from the warm side here. And by the way, I calculate everything per degree Celsius. So I just have one degree inside and zero on the outside just to make a unit temperature difference. Far away from the thermal bridge, the heat flows almost one-dimensionally through our wall. That would happen, of course, also out here. But with a multidimensional computational program to calculate heat flows, then we can have uh, a calculation that the heat flow will, will follow um, as it comes close to the, to the thermal bridge. It will go into the solid material here. And then it'll find it's an easier way like that. So we'll see some heat flow lines looking like that. Also, of course, we have through the solid material, we have some normal one-dimensional heat flow here, of course, for, for the second flow path here. So altogether, this extra heat flow is what causes the thermal bridge. And that extra is what we want to characterize by the C values. So now, in order to continue then to calculate we need a multidimensional heat flow program to tell us, under those conditions that we have entered here, what will be the total heat flow phi. And this we could, for a simple approximation, assume to, well, that would just be the summation of the area and the U value of this flow path for area 1, for area 2, and for area 3. So if you multiply the areas with the U values, then we're almost there, except we are missing that linear thermal transmittance, C. And that we have uh, over here. We have we should, uh, two places where it happens, but this all has to be multiplied with a length of one meter. And that should be multiplied with the C value that we're calculating. And since we have two of them, I'll just multiply with the number two out here. Well, I'll just write this equation slightly differently. So that's the length one times u1 plus length 2 times u2 
plus ln three times uh, u three, and then we should have plus two times p. That means outside of the parenthesis, I can put one meter, and I can put my delta t, the temperature difference. So that leads to a calculation whereby I hope I can isolate uh, the c value. But that requires that I have calculated the, the overall heat flow going through the wall. And this I need to do with a, a program for that. In this case, I've used the program COMSOL that we use in our course. So here we see the temperature uh, as, a, as, a, as a color pattern here. But we can also see the isotherms if I shift the slide here. And you can see by the arrows how, what I drew on, my, on the whiteboard over here that you can actually see that the heat flow, yes, it goes straight through the wall where we have symmetry also out here, small lines because it's well insulated out here. But as we come close to the thermal bridge, it follows those paths that I just illustrated also on the whiteboard. But from this program, then I can also see, I don't have the number, but I, I can, can read it for you, that we have, in this case, uh, for normal uh, properties for, for brick and insulation, as I have made a calculation, well then, I have a value for phi, which is 0 0.4, oh, yeah, let me have all the digits here, 4059 uh, watt. So that we should then use to isolate phi up here. So when I do that, if I do it correctly, I have to be careful here. <coughs> well, then I have phi in a calculation which tells me that we should take uh, a p c is equal to the heat flow that was calculated by the program. Uh, but if I take phi, I should divide by one meter and I should divide by delta theta. So one meter and the temperature difference like this. And then I can subtract all the things I have here. So I can subtract L1 times U1 minus L2 and U2 minus L3 times U3. OK, that was almost C because I had two of them. So I have to divide in the end the result by two. I have made my homework here based on that calculation you saw from the slide over there. And that leads then to when I insert those numbers, I should subtract, well, one meter divided by delta theta. Theta, what delta theta was one degree centigrade, so that is just one that I should divide with here. So all this comes up to a result, and now I'll simply be a little bit boring if I may to, to write the result. 0 0.4059. That was a result from 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 the, from the numerical program. Then I have a width here, which is 0 0.3 meters with normal building geometry for such walls. So 0 0.3 meters. And the U value of the well insulated part of the wall is 0 0.260 watt per square meter Kelvin, if you want to have the complete set. Um, then I should subtract for the not so well insulated part of the wall. And there the thickness is 0 0.108. And the U value, and sorry guys, I have to use the same units, but I'll leave them out here for, to, serve the, to conserve the space I have left here. That would be the result. Then I should have another part of the well-insulated wall, but that looks the same as the one I had over here, so that I can multiply this term here with 2. If I calculate all this together, then I get a C value. Um, which, uh, yeah, first of all, I have to divide by 2, by the way, you should remind me of this. So now the value of this calculation gives a C value, which is 0 0.042. And the unit for, this, for the C value would be what? Per meter per Kelvin. So that was how to calculate a C value for this special geometry in this case, and how you will always need to calculate C values. So the notion is to calculate, just to summarize, calculate what is the real multidimensional uh, calculated uh, heat loss, subtract from that those elements that would normally be seen for, for one-dimensional flow, 
And then Psi expresses kind of the extra that you will get. Now, this was the calculation. This was the example. If I may go back to the PowerPoint here, I'll end with a picture of such a wall, an old-fashioned brick wall where we have those ties of brick bring, tying the inner and the outer leaf of the walls together. And we see such a pattern here that it becomes black. That's for the insulated parts, and it's white in the parts where we have structural connection between inside and outside. And this you can also make it as an infrared picture to, to register, and, and you can see the surface temperatures on such a picture if you, if you have the instrument. So that completes the talk about the theme. A little bit of talk about the theory, how to come to some numbers, the, the C values, linear thermal transmittances, that we can calculate all this with. I hope you enjoyed the lecture and that you can use these terms as from now on. Thank you for now. Mm -hmm.